let's join the stars, celebrities, and Britain's top fashion designers. The occasion, a mannequin parade with a difference. The theme is beautifully exemplified by Worth model Roland, exhibiting this banana cream face cloth dinner dress, heavily embroidered with topaz, pearls, and diamante. A distinguished audience paid close and enthusiastic attention to the show. Norman Hartnell watches with Lady Rothermere, they are chairman and president of the Incorporated Society of London Fashion Designers, while film stars Richard Todd and Derek Farr relax and watch others perform for a change. Pam appears wearing a spring model from the house of Hardy Amis. In exquisite purple fine wool, features to note are the matching velvet collar, the pencil slim skirt and the matching blouse. And now Sheila. Truly she walks in beauty like the night. A black fitted coat with cape collar embroidered in braid and velvet is worn over a black wool dress with embroidered bodice. Tadpole is the name Hardy Amos gave this ensemble and in case you wonder why, the secret's revealed in the shape of the embroidery. If winter comes, can spring be well, really, it can't, for here is Carol in a Charles Creed suit for 1951 in white Barathea. Slim skirt tapering to a narrow hemline, the hip line emphasized by the three-quarter length jacket. Designer Hartnell casts a connoisseur's eye over a Digby Morton three-piece tailored suit in wool jersey. The umbrella, by the way, has won acclaim in both London and Paris as the smartest accessory of the season. Whether to call this worth coat check or plaid was quite a problem. The title is En Decide, broadly translatable as what do you think? Anyway, worn over a navy wool dress, it fits the bill admirably. In this case, Roland. One of the world's most famous models, Dolores, takes the stage in this, her 3,000th mannequin parade. The appropriate title of this Hartnell outfit is Postman's Knock, and I'm sure any man would willingly answer the door. It's a non-stop parade of high fashion and fine fabrics, and now it's the turn of Joyce, wearing a Victor Stiebel wrap-over coat in peacock velour, featuring wide sleeves cuffed with phantom beaver. The day dress underneath is in lightweight wool to match, the softly folded skirt wrapped over at the back. Mere man shouldn't be too enthusiastic, thinks Dennis Price. They foot the bill. But who could fail to be excited at Jean Mason's outfit, designed by Michael Sherrard? The color of the tweed coat is of chinchilla gray, toning beautifully with a winter pink doe-skin suit. Here's Peter Russell's next ensemble. The barrel top coat is in fine black wool velour with piping to match the Barathea dress worn underneath. The coat has two derriere pockets, also featured on the dress with its new side apron skirt. This wins the approval of actress Valerie Hobson, accepted as one of Britain's leading ladies of fashion. And now, make way for Sheila in a Cumberland tweed suit in oatmeal designed by Matley. The jacket is belted to give a blouse back, the skirt darted, with the pleats fitting into the special belt. Michael Sherrard designed this carnation red velour coat lined in orchid pink. Worn by Jean, it's enough to create envy in any woman's heart. It's worn here over a silver grey wool and lame jersey dress. The hat, by the way, is from one piece of material and designed by Jeff. Meanwhile, behind scenes, the models get a little attention. Wearing beautiful clothes before a critical audience needs poise. And as any woman will tell you, poise depends on the knowledge that you're looking your best. Elizabeth Hamilton, modeling for Matley, comes off stage into the dressing room where the dresser starts immediately on the task of another quick change for her next appearance. The whole secret of the unruffled elegance out front is calm organization and a well-planned schedule behind stage. Modeling, as Elizabeth would tell you, is interesting and fascinating work but it's also grueling, calling for stamina as well as graciousness. And 
and here she is. One can detect something of the masculine overcoat influencing this double-breasted effect of the black and white velour box coat. But there are other interesting features too. Elizabeth demonstrates the flaps under the half belt at the back, the wide cuffs and the low pocket flaps at the front. Dolores makes haste to enter on her queue, watched from the wings by the dressers. Then she proceeds elegantly to display Gilt Edge, a lovely black wool afternoon dress, the gold metal embroidery stretching diagonally from shoulder to hemline. Hartnell is followed by a Charles Creed model, a very chic ensemble entitled Toujours. Designed to look charming at any hour of the day, the dress is a fine grey worsted with black velvet collar and cuffs. Note the Beau Brummel touch in the rough and frill of white organza. This time it's Joyce in a very fine black wool dinner dress by Victor Stiebel. The décolleté is inset with black velvet, which is also the material of the full panel at the back of the skirt. This is called an exit dress. As one model completes her display, another waits to take her place. Pearl is duly checked off the list before she enters, and here she is in this svelte dinner dress of olive green fine wool by Worth. The ultra-slim skirt falls into a small train with gold and coral embroidery on the corsage pockets. Delore is again in Right Royal, an appropriate title by the Queen's dressmaker for this flowing dinner gown in royal blue wool. The plunging neckline is accentuated by the large collar, richly encrusted with multicolored hand embroidery. Originality in conception by the leading fashion designers and beautiful materials in which to execute one's ideas make the parade a continuous pattern of color and grace. The pageant flows on with the new color, Pewter Red, used effectively in this dinner dress in fine chiffon tweed, designed by Peter Russell with coat to match. Off stage, Carol prepares for her entrance, this time in Digby Morton's Grosvenor, a striking new three-quarter length spiral coat in Chinese blue, worn over a black wool dinner dress, an excellent demonstration of the wide contrasting range of wool. Heavy as you've known it, and as light as you like. The inspiration for this model may well have been a sari. Worn by Jean, it's a sheath dinner dress in fine white wool doeskin. A fern design has been carried out in velvet, the shades varying from spring yellow and greens to bronzes and deep reds. From skirt to shoulders, it's a beautiful garment. The matching hood in pale green emphasizing the sheer draping qualities of the wool, Bermuda doeskin as it's called. Introducing Marrakish, which Delores wears. The fabric has enabled the designer to execute his idea, a white serge evening coat trimmed with black velvet. And if you can spare an eye, notice the exquisite heavy embroidery in multicolored stones on sleeves and pockets. Color, it is said, is one of man's most precious gifts. Chivalry demands that the other be woman. Combined as they were here, the result was inevitably a glowing loveliness as she walked in beauty.